So spin forward a couple of decades and you're getting married. Beautiful wedding, starts actually in this hotel and you go back to your house in Lake Zurich, not far from here. And then a series of revelations happen. You feel a bit weird on your wedding day, a bit tired. I have an old pain, which they still haven't found out what it is in my chest. I think what it is, it, it's um, a cramp in the, the same one you get from the fingers uh -huh. and the toes and the muscle. And then you had a stroke. Then it was a stroke that came because I actually, why? The stroke was why. I don't know why the stroke was. I think I had overdone something, some yeah. kind of way. But I went to hospital to find out what this cramping sensation was. And I, they put me on the table for M MRI, we call it. And they said the blood pressure went up. Huh. And I said, oh, it's always up, you know, because I always had high blood pressure. And I think that's what caused it, because afterwards I felt not good after the, the treatment of, you know, trying to check and they say, well, I don't see anything except the blood pressure went up. Yeah. And after that, I went uh, on the honeymoon, didn't come back. After that, we came back and we were going to go to another trip, one of those other trips with a group of friends. And I woke up and I said to Urban, I can't go. I can't talk. Wow. <laughs> Urban called the doctor and he said, bring her in, give her an aspirin and we we'll see. How, and scared, how scared were you? Not scared at all. I just wondered why I couldn't talk. Oh, right. <laughs> right. I just thought it would come back something, you know. Okay. So he took me in. Immediately they took me in and say, a little, it's a mild stroke from the back of the head. Mm -hmm. And then they took me down in the room and I didn't believe it. I saw a stroke. Like that. They left the room. Blop, hit the floor. The whole right side was gone. Oh, wow. And I thought, what have I done? I really have had something because I can't move. It took me really what seemed like an hour to get up because then I learned how to get up when, you, when you're down and up, right. not holding on to something. So then when I got up, I sat in it and I thought, well, for, until I learned what this is, this stroke that they say I have, obviously I do. And then they started the therapy of writing with the right hand, all, that, all of that was gone. It's all, the right side was gone? The whole right side. But the talking was better than okay. in the morning yeah. when I said, I get, I'm happy that went. But then I had to force, will myself to walk, to make the, to make the leg walk, not uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. So then I forced, used all of my willpower to re, I wanted to get back like I was. I didn't believe, you know, I thought I was the ultimate person to fix things. Right. So they said, well, how you do that? Don't give in to it. It'll come back. It was a mild stroke. It yeah. wasn't a heavy one. You and know. you were 73 at the time? At the time, yes. And did it affect your, your, your singing at all? Well, I and had Obviously retired. when you couldn't speak, but once your speech came back, did your, was your voice still there? You know, actually I had retired. I haven't actually tried to sing since, but I'm sure I can. Oh, yes, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I can still sing, but it does affect the, the, the singing, doesn't it? I would have thought, yeah. I would have thought. Yeah. But I, I Tina, I've never been able to sing. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask you next, can you sing? <laughs> no, I think I can sing. The talking is the same, except I think I don't talk as quite as quick. Right, okay. I spoke quite and you, you quickly. can't sign, you say, you can't autograph I, now. Yeah, the, the, the handwriting became better. I can walk. Sometimes I feel something on that side. You might notice the face is a bit fuller on that side is where it it affected mostly this side. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the face became bigger, the handwriting. I corrected all of that. So with a little makeup, you don't notice the face change. Right. You're supposed to say, yes, Tina, you're right. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you look fantastic. What can I tell you, honestly? Uh, um, but that's the, the beginning of, of this story. That was of, the beginning of this story. So, so it starts with this high, high moment. You're in love with this man. You couldn't believe it's happened to you. You get married. You're in your early 70s, you've, you've, you've stopped showbiz, you've retired, you're about to enjoy yourself, you have a stroke, and then... Yeah. So then they, they said, uh, only one of your kidneys are functioning. So I said, well, so what happens? He says, if you don't maintain, if you don't do what we recommend, you will probably die. So I said, well, if it's time, I, you know, I felt like... It, 
I'm late 70s. My mother died at 84. My sister died at 74. I thought maybe this was my time. Mm. So he said, no, 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 no. We, we can do something about it. He said, there's a machine downstairs. I said, oh, no, I'm not living on a machine. I Dialysis, thought. right? So we went downstairs, yes. And there was this machine standing there. And I realized that I had to, I would have to use this machine if I decided to live. And I said, oh, no, I'm not living on a machine. That's not a quality of life. They said, no, 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 no. You, you, what it will do is provide you with a cleanser for the body until we find a kidney for you. Irvin said to the doctors, can I give her one of mine? Something similar to this, I wasn't there. And then he found out that he doesn't need two kidneys. So then he came to me and said, Tina, you don't have to make this decision now. I, I can give you one of my kidneys. I said, oh, Irvin, you're young. I'm already older. It's okay, you just get a, used to me not being here. Oh no, he didn't want that, so. So then he talked me into him taking on one kidney. So I said, well, no, I have to talk to the doctors. And then I talked to them about Irvin and what will happen to him because he was, he was still quite young. Mm. And I did feel like I, I was older. I was already in my 70s. So why should I take the kidneys from a young man and let him finish his life? Like, that's what I felt like. Mm. And he said, no, 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 my life is fine how it is. I'll give you one of my kidneys. And so. Two people.